So uh, I'm, I'm going to do trends in construction marketing, a couple of talks already about the opportunities uh, that there are out there, and I'm going to talk about how um, some of you um, are shaping up to take them. Um, quick thing about SimSig, Chartership Marketing and Construction Industry Group. We are a 1,500 member organization of chartered marketers, and we've all done exams. We do uh, reports, there we go, uh, reports like that. We do lovely events, this chap here. Um, is actually the chief exec of the uh, Timber Frame Association. Uh, he does the disco at our uh, um, annual award ceremony. Um, he has, he, until recently, he was trading under the name of Johnny Inferno. Um, and somebody pointed out that the chief exec of the Timber Frame Association might fancy a bit of a name. Uh, he now works as Daddy Cool. Um, this gives me a perspective, uh, being a judge on the Construction Marketing Awards, I see a lot of exemplary um, pieces of marketing, so I can talk about that. And we did a report recently about trends in marketing spend and activity that I'm going to pick up on as well. Uh, me, uh, I am, Chartlane is my company, I'm a strategic communications consultant. I used to write the back page rant for construction news. I'm going to draw my maps. I share this building here, the Pinnacle from Crawley, fabulous, um, with Rob from Van El. Um, we discovered in the networking outside, it's good to network. Um, and I have a specialism in, in social media, which is my peer index score up there, hopefully. Those of you who know it about Peer Index will enjoy that. I'm going to talk about five areas. I'm going to talk about money. Uh, I'm going to talk about technology. I'm going to talk about focus and targeting. I'm going to talk about integration. And I'm going to talk about social. That's it. I'm going to start with money. Uh, I mentioned uh, that we did a survey about trends in marketing spend. Um, I was reminded when we did it about the 91-92 uh, the recession. Who remembers the 91-92 recession? Uh, that produced, um, in marketing terms, uh, a permanent 20% drop in marketing spend across all industries. Um, and so it's no surprise then to track that since 2008 there has been roughly a 20% drop in marketing spend in the construction sector, according to the survey that we conducted last year. Um, the, nice, uh, the nice thing that we found last year is that actually there's been about a 5% bounce back in this current financial year. So it looks like this current... Uh, slow down, recession, um, it's not going to be quite as, as horrible as the 91-92, which is good. Um, we have found also that this has produced a number of trends, 82%, uh, which is a figure that reminded me that Vic Reeves once said 82% of statistics are made up on the spot. 82% um, of uh, companies in, in the construction space um, are moving their spend from above the line um, an advertising space into online and um, more directly measurable activity. And while total spend is still kind of hovering about the 3 to 4% of turnover on marketing, um, that's obviously down in real terms because turnovers have dropped. Um, trends within that and the types of things that people are spending their money on, um, literature uh, and uh, samples is, is still the key, uh, still the largest spend for people with that takes up about 20% of most people's budgets, although that's less than it used to be. Um, exhibitions, next one, um, trade exhibitions, attending them, about 15%. Then uh, is the first change uh, where online spend comes in at about 15%. Now, 15% of all construction marketing budgets are spent online. Um, that is at the expense of uh, advertising, direct mail, and sponsorship, which has kind of, generally speaking, collapsed over the last four years. Uh, this has produced a number of uh, further trends in, in marketing uh, and in, in how we deal with our spend. Uh, return on investment has become a much more um, common phrase for people um, and something which um, companies, in, partic in particular accountants within companies, look for their marketing teams to track. Um, profit divided by campaign cost is something you'll now see pretty much as a standard in all entries uh, for the aforementioned construction marketing awards. Um, there are other kind of KPIs, people track uh, inquiries, people track um, changes in perception around brands, but the other, tra the other thing about this is that they do track them. There is a great deal more management, uh, measurement now um, in 2012 than there was in 2008 of what the marketing spend actually does. Uh, sales inquiries, as I say, perceptions. Um, there is a requirement to produce uh, a demonstrable return um, from the reduced budgets that we are seeing. Uh, something that helps 
uh, is this, this is a actually it's a graphic I nicked from an exhibition called Technology for Marketing, which is something which didn't exist four years ago. The exhibition um, Technology has been a real driver in helping marketing people reduce costs. I was reminded actually, Glenigan is 40. Gosh, um, I was reminded of my first visit to Glenigan, Rob. I think you took me around. Um, you proudly show me the, the former carpet showroom that you were then in. Um, and in the front of the building, there were about 100 photocopiers. Um, and you used to get all your leads and photocopy them and mail them out to your customers. So, you know, the change in technology you can see in what Glenigan does. Um, and that is biting, is carrying itself through in terms of, uh, this is the CRM systems area on this graphic. Um, CRM systems, um, data integration, um, mobile systems, apps, um, search engine optimization tools, there's a whole section on those, um, and blogs, WordPress, and so on. These are things which are changing the way that you deliver your marketing and the way that you measure your marketing. Um, and if you, if you aren't kind of taking advantage of these generally quite cheap systems, then you really need to be, because your competitors certainly are. Uh, another trend that we can spot is in focus and targeting. Now, um, this, this, is, this is the rise of segmentation, really. Uh, uh, for, for, again, four years ago, uh, judging the Construction Marketing Awards, the average uh, number of segments identified in campaign of the year um, was 1.3. Uh, so people would be addressing their messages generally at one big group of people, kind of broadcast thing. And now what we find is that people are doing well, even narrow casts, they're kind of micro casts. Um, the average number now in that same category for this year's set of entries so far, uh, entries close today, um, uh, the, the average number of entries is, of segments is nine. So that's a kind of, I can't do the maths in my head, um, seven times multiple of the, of, the, of the amount of segmentation that's going on. People are really taking care over constructing their messages to, to smaller and more focused groups of people. Um, people are spending a lot more money on pre-communication research uh, and using that to test and form their messages. Again, if you're not doing that, you need to think about doing so. Integration uh, is another thing that we're really seeing. This, um, hopefully you can't really see, this is a proprietary piece of stuff that I extracted from one of last year's um, Construction Marketing Awards entrance. Um, it is an amazing piece of stuff where uh, advertising um, social networking, various different uh, forms of lead generation um, and, and demand generation material feeds leads, leads um, into a uh, kind of automated and personalised response system where people are taken on a journey, um, as they described it, um, very X factor, taken on a journey through the process to becoming a customer. Um, the, th the other thing that's remarkable about this, apart from that it's just uh, fabulous, um, is that it didn't actually win. Um, the, one, the thing that won this category uh, sadly didn't have quite such a sexy graphic, so I didn't use it. Um, but the thing that won this category was just an amazing piece of, um, of uh, customer loyalty management that segmented a builder's merchant's customers into about 300 groups and then targeted them individually and personally with sets of communication. Um, produced for that individual builder's merchant a £5 million profit lift um, year on year from the same group of customers. So. That's the kind of thing that we are seeing in integrated communications, running through data, going, through, going from um, demand generation through to uh, continuing customer activity. Uh, and and the, the, the final kind of subject area really is this social. Um, lots of talk about social media. We've had it mentioned a couple of times already. Um, there is a struggle still for everybody out there with the ROI that you might achieve from um, social, online social media, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, and so on. Um, there's no struggle of, struggle of engagement. Uh, on our notes, LinkedIn went through 10 million members this month uh, in the UK, and 10 million professional members. I remember, I am, I was in fact the 67,000th 67, global member for LinkedIn um, when I joined up. Um, there's, and so clearly now there's a lot more people using it. And that was back in 1990 something. I care not to remember when. Um, the, the thing that these things do, uh, and I was having a discussion about this outside, um, they help you deliver a conversation. They help you engage with people. Now, um, 
Gareth, we, we were chatting outside a fellow member of SimSig about how um, his company uses them in community engagement around obtaining planning permissions and around uh, keeping community on site during construction. Um, consultants use them a lot to demonstrate expertise, to take part in conversation. And this is the thing with all of these things, including blogs here, this is about taking part in a conversation. There's no point broadcasting your feelings um, because people don't really want to listen. The other thing that, I've, that I now pick up is that this, these kind of things, and here we are, here we all are at one, um, face to face interaction and engagement has become much more important for business development and marketing people in the construction sector over the last four years. I think it's because a lot of the time it's either free or relatively cheap, but hanging out with other people and chatting um, is a much more important way for people of generating um, their new business. And in fact, going back to that survey, um, is climbing from kind of 0.5% to about 5% of marketing activity focused specifically on face-to-face -face physical networking. Um, so, despite how, how much we begin to rely on electronic communications, getting out and chat to each other, really important. So, if you don't train your staff um, in networking, if you don't train your staff um, in talking to people and in kind of having social interaction, um, which is important with some of your more technical staff, I guess, um, then uh, please start thinking about it because, again, other people are. That's me. Uh, I'm Ross. Um, you can get me on ross at chartlane.co.uk if you've enjoyed it, um, or if you didn't, um, you can get me on that as well. And I think I'm staying for questions, so thanks very much.